grandfather of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his name was Abdul Muttalib. This Abdul Muttalib was one of the leaders of Quraysh, Sayyidul Qawm. He was the top of Quraysh. And he used to have, he was a powerful, beautiful, meaning handsome man, very strong. And people looked at him, listened to him. He was extremely eloquent as well. And his place was right in the shade of the Kaaba. And he had a special mat which they laid for him. And he would sit on there. Nobody would ever dare sit on that mat. He would sit on it and he would dish out instructions and so on. And he had 11 children. Subhanallah. 11 sons. And from amongst his sons was also Abdullah, the father of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had various others. And what happened is one day he says that I was sleeping in Al-Hijr. Al-Hijr is the part of the Kaaba. Nowadays you find a little crescent sort of uh, structure. It used to be within the Kaaba at a certain stage and when they did not have halal funds to actually build it in that shape, they left it more or less like a cube and that part, although it was in the Kaaba, is now out of it. So if you are reading Salah in it, it's as though you are reading Salah in the Kaaba. So this man was resting there and he saw a dream. In his dream, he was told to dig Taiba. So he asked, what is Taiba? Anyway, the dream came to an end. The next day, he was in the same place, he had a dream. And he was told to dig Barra. He asked, what is Barra? And the dream came to an end. And the third day, he saw a dream. And the historians all make mention of this. And he was told to dig Madmuna, Madmuna. And he asked, what is that? And the dream came to an end. The fourth day, he saw a dream. And he was told to dig Zamzam. So he asked, what is it? He was told it is a well that will never deplete. Everyone can drink from it. it. Water will gush from it forever and ever. It was there. He was basically informed exactly it, where its spot was. And he was told its history. And he was told where it was. So he got up in the morning. He got one of his children, Al-Harith, according to one of the narrations. And the two of them began to dig. And Quraysh was watching. Quraysh, obviously, they all related to one another somehow. They have different clans depending on the children. And the children, like we have so many brothers, each brother, a different clan starts from one. So they watched him. When he started saying Allahu Akbar, imagine these were people of ignorance, but they still used terminologies referring to Allah. Because as I said, when they had issues, they referred it to Allah again. But they used to worship others besides Allah. Like sometimes what happens in our midst. We worship Allah alone. But then sometimes we happen to worship this and that and sticks and stones and graves and so on. And all this is against the law of Allah. The whole reason why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent was to remove mankind from worshipping man to worshipping the creator of man. Subhanallah. So let's not lose focus on this. So when he said Allahu Akbar, Quraysh came around. The people came around. They saw, yes, there is water here. They started debating, hey, this water belongs to our forefather. Who's your forefather? Ismail. Alayhi salatu wassalam. And this water came from that time. Yes. And this water belongs to all of us, not to you. He said, no. It was in my dream. I was instructed. Had I not been instructed, you would have not known about it. So they decided, okay. Let's go to someone who can be a judge between us. We don't want to fight amongst us. And they decided we will go to someone from Bani Sa'ad, a little bit further up north, close to the, uh, where Sham is. Very, very far from the Arabian Peninsula. So a group of them got together, the leaders, and they left. They had a little bit of food with them. And they got to a point where the desert stretched and stretched. They ran out of food and ran out of water. And now all of them were preparing for death. Abdul Muttalib and all his clansmen and the others who were debating going to this one fortune teller so what had happened is they decided okay it's all over the game is over we cannot go back nor can we go further every one of us is going to die the best and most noble thing to do let's all start digging our graves whilst we have a little bit of energy the one who dies first will be buried by those who are to die later so in that way only one will be left out but even he he can go down and really uh, you know get ready to sleep Allahu Akbar so this was their plan. They started digging. And as they started digging and preparing for death, what happened? Abdul Muttalib walked towards his animal, his camel. And suddenly from its feet, water started gushing miraculously from the feet of this animal, which belonged to Abdul Muttalib, at a distance from where everyone was. And immediately they were all shocked. This was before Islam. 
and they immediately said this is a sign that your well is the well of Zamzam meaning you will be the leader you will be in charge of that water it's not like he was going to have it for himself everyone was going to be obviously quenched from the water of Zamzam but at the same time who was going to be the leader that was what was being discussed so they immediately acknowledged they drank from the water and they said now let's go back no point to go further they went back and Abdul Muttalib was the one responsible for that water he used to feed he used to give the hajis water those who used to come for that pagan hajj as we made mention of and everyone drank from that water to this day the water is gushing out of that spot in Makkah al Mukarramah all of us know that and I think in all our homes we have some of that water known as Zamzam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later says, Zamzam lima shuribalah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention it is drunk for. You want to drink it to be cured, you will be cured. You want to drink it to pass your exams, you will pass your exams. You want to drink it for sustenance, you will have sustenance. You want to drink it for any other reason, you will have that inshallah. For as long as it's a noble reason and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a drink from Zamzam and may he make us from those who can constantly have it in our homes for indeed it even protects from the devil.